Hey there, Wood Turners. Mike P. at you. I want to talk to you about a, a really a great way to fasten things to your lathe, and that's using a threaded glue block or a wooden face plate. Um, I'm going to walk you through that process, but first let me tell you about what they're useful for. Instead of using a face plate for all kinds of accessories, such as a strop for your uh, uh, skew, for example, or you can make a specialty uh, strop uh, out, of, out of MDF. No use dedicating a, a face plate to it. You can make one out of out of wood. Uh, basically, they, it's just a, a block of wood that's been threaded and tapped, using primarily uh, a reasonably priced threaded tap that's available is the, from uh, Beal. And this is one and a quarter. Matches my Powermatic uh, lathe, and it's very easy. You drill a hole using this. Uh, prescribed size hole which is uh, one and one eighth. Use the Forstner bit. We'll walk you through that. Uh, you can use these things for uh, making box blanks. Uh, the beauty of it is you can put a uh, blank on it, hollow it out, let it dry uh, several months, and you don't have to worry about dedicating a face plate. And you put this on, it'll always run true. So it's just it's just very handy for box blanks, specialty items, uh, dedicated vacuum chucks. Uh, it's, it's just really using most any type of hardwood works. I would not use MDF for the uh, threaded block, but uh, maple works well. Cherry, this is cherry. Cherry is generally not as advisable because you may run into pitch pockets that could cause some weakness or some uh, uh, air leakage. But uh, any solid hardwood, uh, I'm going to use poplar. Uh, maple works well. Uh, almost almost anything. So let's get started set up for a fence to uh, blade distance of about three inches which is the size of this uh, poplar sticker I'm going to use my uh, miter gauge so I can get a nice square square cut so let me turn on the dust collection and get started distance for half of that three inches or an inch and a half and cut these blocks into two. And I'm going to use a push stick for safety. found the easiest way to drill these is do it on a lathe if you're fortunate enough to have a, a large chuck that can hold a square blank that makes it really really easy. Now I've already evaluated the bottom of these chuck jaws so I know my one and one eighth inch Forstner bit is going to clear the jaws at the bottom of the hole otherwise I would put a spacer block behind it uh, to prevent any, any type of accident. I've already uh, consulted with the chart I know that 600 is a safe speed so I'm going to turn this on Turn my lathe up to 600 for this size uh, Forstner bit. You don't want to go too fast or you will have a tendency to burn it up. So we're going to sit at 600, about 600. And I'm going to hold the Jacobs chuck as I feed this slowly into the, into the wood. And clear it. with the drilling. Okay, now we're getting ready to tap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 60 degree cone, put it in my live center. I'm going to take my tap, center it, and then I use the cone just to keep it centered. Actually, before I do that, I made me a, a tap handle out of wood, uh, nothing special. This has got a square end on it. And this just makes it easier for me to turn it and 
keep uniform pressure on it. Now you can do this on a drill press uh, if you can hold the block square. Uh, you can drill the holes on the drill press. You can mount this in a vise and drill these uh, or tap these things vertically by hand, but I found it a little harder to sometimes keep this thing exactly lined up square 90 degrees uh, and, and square to the hole. So I find this a little bit easier. You don't turn the lathe off. It's a manual operation. So you turn it maybe just a half a turn or so. Tighten it up. Turn another half. And then back it off a little bit. Retighten. Drill again. And just back and forth. You gotta clear those chips. Every now and then you gotta back it off. And then just keep this somewhat snug just to keep it straight. Clear the chips. And just continue this process until you have it taken care of and threaded. And again this will clear the base of my chuck jaws. If not, you can go almost all the way through and then complete the last process sitting on a table, maybe clamp it down. There's a fast process. These the beel tap comes in a one and a quarter. It'll fit your 3520 Firematic and your 16 Jet 1642 and other common size lays. You can also get it in a one inch that fits the popular uh, mini lays. Just keep clearing chips. If you don't clear the chips, you're going to have a problem. So just got to keep them clear. You can put the spindle lock on if you have a spindle lock. Do that. That might make it a little easier. Go ahead and thread it all the way through. We're going to come back later after we finish the process. We're going to put some thin CA in the threads to strengthen a little bit, let it dry, and come back and clear clear those threads one more time. Okay, that's got it. Now you can see we've got a nice tapped hole. Now we're going to do the next step. Our next step is we have to provide this clearance on one side so when you get to the unthreaded portion of your spindle it will clear that in order that you can face this uh, have this flat face register here. As we do this using a uh, square uh, scraper we're also going to face this off so it will fish fl flush here and register then we're going to mount it, turn it around and square off the other side and, and round it off. So. Here we go. And it doesn't make any difference which side you use. Use the flattest side. We're just going to snug it up. Get this in place. Grab our... Get our square scraper. We're going to come out. It's only a little over a sixteenth of an inch. It only has to clear it a little over, a, a close to maybe an eighth of an inch. So if you give yourself somewhere close to an eighth of an inch down, an eighth inch on each, each side, you're good to go. Now, before we turn it around, we're going to make sure that fits. 
we're going to take a bowl gouge and face this off just to make sure it's absolutely true. By drilling, drilling this on the lathe and tapping it on the lathe really keeps these surfaces pretty well oriented. Turn it off. We'll take some, some flat. I can look down the side and see, yes, it's almost perfectly flat. You've got just a little bit of a high spot in the middle. I can just barely touch it. And we're good to go. Now we're going to take that off. And now this recess will fit well here. We flatten it off so it will register against the face of the spindle. And now we're, we're straight. Now all we got to do is face off the front and then round it off for aesthetics. You want to try to get it perfectly flat or possibly a tiny bit concave because you want to be able to register on this outside surface if you're uh, gluing up. You don't want any type of bulge here that keep you from getting a nice flat surface. Now all we got to do is turn the thing sideways, make sure we got some clearance, and we're going to go ahead and just clear that, round, round that block off. Cut in for each end to minimize chipping. I'm going to take a slight chamfer here at the face. Makes it a little easier if you use a glue block. If you need to put a chisel in there to uh, break it loose, and we're done. We've got us a nice, usable, threaded block that we can use as a face plate. And there we are. If you got any questions, please write me. Visit my YouTube channel. Uh, visit my blog that's shown here, where I've got uh, access to articles I've written you can download and some other uh, videos. So I hope this has been been useful to you if you have any